please perform a cranial nerve examination on this patient. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Lowe. So before I begin, can I just ask, do you have any pain anywhere? No. Um, today I'm going to be examining the nerves in your head and neck. Does that sound okay? Yeah, fine. Okay. Firstly, can I ask, have you noticed any change in your smell recently? No. No. And any change in your vision? Yes. Okay. Do you normally wear glasses? Uh, yes, for reading. Okay, fine. I'll, I'll bear that in mind. At this point, I would formally assess visual acuity and colour vision using a Snellen chart and Ishihara plates, respectively. Okay, Renato, I'm going to start by asking you to look at my nose. I'm going to hold my hands out and I want you to point to the finger that's wriggling, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, now I want you to take your right hand and cover your right eye. I'm going to do the same with my left hand. I've got a white hat pin here. I want you to tell me when you can see it in your field of vision. Yeah, I can see. And tell me if it disappears. Yeah, it says that's okay. I can see. So again, focus on my nose and I'll bring it in. Disappear. 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 Okay. And now if you cover your left hand with your... Uh, sorry, cover your left eye with your left hand. I'll do the same again. Mm -hmm. You can see it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So again, looking at me. I can see. Disappear. Yeah. Fine. Can you look over my shoulder at the wall? And I'm going to shine a light in your eyes now, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now keep focusing at the wall. And can you look at my pen? That's fine. At this point, I would offer to perform fundoscopy to look at the back of the eye. So Renata, I'm going to get you to focus on that white hat pin and without moving your head, track it with your eyes. Let me know if there's any pain or double vision. Any pain or double vision? No. Can I ask you to bite down? And I'm going to feel the muscles in your face, okay? And bite down again. Fine. I'm going to test the sensation now. If I get you to close your eyes, it's going to feel like this. I want you to say yes if you can feel it touching your face. Mm -hmm. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Does that feel the same on both sides? Mm -hmm. okay. At this point, I would offer to perform the corneal reflex. So, Renata, I'm now going to test some of the movements in your face. Can I get you to lift your eyebrows up? Can you keep them there and don't let me push you down? Okay, and can you close your eyes and shut them tight? Again, don't let me open them. Okay. And can you puff out your cheeks? And don't let me push it up. Okay, and can you smile for me? Okay, now I'm going to test your hearing. I'm going to come behind you for this. I'm going to say a number in your ear, and I want you to repeat that back to me, okay? 17. 28. Brilliant. Now can I get you to open your mouth for me? Stick your tongue out and say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Okay, that's fine. At this point, I would offer to test the gag reflex. Okay. 
Now I'm going to get you to shrug your shoulders for me, please. Can you shrug them up? And don't let me push you down. Good. Can you turn your head to the left and push against me? Good. And same on the other side. And push against me. Good. That's fine. And lastly, I'm going to get you to stick your tongue out. And can you move it to the side and to the other side as fast as possible? OK, that's fine. Thank you, Renata. Thank you. To complete my examination, I would like to perform a full neurological examination of the upper and lower limbs. Please present your findings. I conducted a cranial nerve examination on this young patient. On inspection, I observed facial asymmetry with drooping of the mouth and eye on the right side. The patient demonstrated weakness in raising their right eyebrow, closing their right eye, and showing their teeth on the right side. Together, this is suggestive of a right lower motor neuron facial palsy. The remainder of the cranial nerve examination, including the hearing assessment, was unremarkable, apart from the evidence of a monocular visual loss in the left eye in all visual fields, which may actually warrant further investigation in future. However, in summary, this patient presents with physical signs consistent with a right lower motor neuron facial palsy. The most common cause of this is Bell's palsy. What are the causes of this presentation? Potential causes of a lower motor neuron facial palsy include Bell's palsy, usually idiopathic, but may also be associated with viral infections. The differential includes Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, which is a herpes zoster infection of the facial nerve, tumors, acu including acoustic neuromas, facial nerve schwannomas, or other neoplasms compressing the facial nerve. Traumatic injury, including damage to the facial nerve due to trauma or surgery. And finally, Guillain-Barre syndrome should be considered. What is your differential diagnosis? Other differentials would include an upper motor neuron facial palsy, either due to a stroke, brain tumour, or other central nervous system lesions. How would you manage this patient? The investigation and management of this patient with lower motor neuron facial palsy would involve Firstly, taking a detailed history to assess for any underlying causes or associated symptoms. Conducting a thorough physical examination, including a full cranial nerve assessment and ear examination to look for vesicles. I would order blood tests, looking for inflammatory markers, and also you might consider Lyme disease serology. Finally, I would want to perform imaging studies, uh, particularly if there were any atypical features in which case I would consider arranging an MRI or CT scan to visualize the facial nerve and surrounding structures uh, to rule out any compressive lesions or other abnormalities. The treatment would of course depend on the underlying cause and may include medical management, for example with steroids or antiviral medications, physical therapy including facial exercises, or surgical intervention including decompressive surgery if indicated. This patient has a diagnosis of a right lower motor neurone facial palsy. On examination, the patient may have facial asymmetry at rest, but often asking the patient to perform movements executed by the seventh cranial nerve is required to exaggerate and demonstrate these asymmetries. Patients may struggle with raising their eyebrows, squeezing their eyes shut, puffing their cheeks out, and showing their teeth or smiling. It is important to remember that upper motor neurone facial nerve palsies spare the upper facial muscles, such as the muscles of the forehead that allow the eyebrows to be raised. This is due to the nerve supply of the forehead coming from both sides of the brain. It is important to look carefully for this in order to distinguish between a lower and upper motor neurone facial nerve palsy, which have different differential diagnoses. The seventh cranial nerve has other functions alongside innervating the muscles of facial expression. This includes taste to the anterior two thirds of the tongue via the chordae tympani, and also plays an important role in dampening loud sounds via the nerve to stapedius. Where possible, these should be checked or inquired about. A full cranial nerve examination is indicated in these individuals, as well as an upper and lower limb neurological assessment to understand the full extent of their potential underlying neurological deficit. 
This may give an indication as to the location and nature of the underlying cause. The causes of a lower motor neurofacial palsy include Bell's palsy, Ramsey-Hunt syndrome, Lyme disease, demyelinating disorders such as Guillain-Barre syndrome, acoustic neuromas, or traumatic injury to the facial nerve, for example, from parotid gland surgery. It is important to consider other potential causes of facial weakness, including disorders of the neuromuscular junction, such as myasthenia gravis. Upper motor neurofacial nerve palsies are associated with strokes, demyelinating disorders such as multiple sclerosis or intracranial tumours. The management of lower motor neurofacial palsy involves taking a detailed history to assess for any potential underlying causes, conducting a thorough physical examination, including examination of the ears for vesicles in Ramsey Hunt, and further investigations such as blood tests for example, Lyme disease serology, or imaging if the diagnosis is unclear or other findings are detected on clinical assessment, such as an MRI or CT scan of the brain. Treatment will depend on the underlying cause and may include medical management, for example, corticosteroids and antiviral medications, physical therapy, or surgical intervention, such as decompression surgery. It is important that patients receive lubricating eye drops and take their eyes closed at night to reduce the risk of exposure keratopathy.